Coming up on Winthrop Close Up. Graduation is slowly approaching. Are you ready for it? Plus, Winthrop University students and staff are coming together to hit the pavement to bring in justice to an end. Welcome to Winter Pulse Up. I'm Leslie Brown. And I'm Gabrielle Franklin. This new digital era has many pros, but also has a few cons. Online harassment continues to be a concern, affecting many members of our community. Here's a deeper look into the issue. The internet gives people the opportunity to say anything they want to whomever they want. Sometimes it's good, and other times it's bad. Actually, like 4 in 10, 40% of internet users are victims of online harassment. Now that includes a broad spectrum of types of harassment. But why do people harass others online? Anonymity does embolden people um, and that, um, you know, they can't be held accountable. They can do, uh, they can attack people and, and never be caught. Dr. Solomon said that people harass on sites like those because of the power that comes along with it. They can control other people because no one knows who they are. Zenobia Williams, a student, says she has always seen celebrities like Beyonce getting mean comments on social media. For some, like, I know it's a trend for, like, the beehive, her fans, to, like, leave these personal, like, girl, why would you type messages. But, like, the ones that go in, like, hate, it's just, like, that's a waste of time. I think if you take the time to actually go through other people's pictures and comment on it, then you really have nothing to do with your time because it's their pictures, they're going to post what they want, like, you post what you want. Dr. Solomon says online harassment can have emotional effects on the victim, but there's no way to crack down on every single online site. Just not clear who, what should be done about it, because there, there aren't any, you know, across the board specific people who are officially assigned responsibility. Do you know someone who has been the victim of online harassment? Share their story with us on Facebook. A photo shoot for a cause. Reporter Melissa Noble shows us how one group of students are protesting in a fashionable way. I had things said to me out of cars, driving, I've had uh, people throw things at people all around. I've, pe I've had people uh, try to fight some me and my friends in the mall um, just different stuff just because of sexuality the no hate campaign started back in 2008 to promote marriage gender and human equality through visual protest but this is the first time with has joined the cause our campus does strive on diversity um, a lot of our students do support LGBT rights and we do have LGBT students on campus so I think it's important that they have an opportunity and a platform to express themselves on Winthrop's campus the No Hate Campaign is encouraging students to speak up. The campaign is a photographic, silent protest that features photos with participants with duct tape over their mouth to symbolize their being silent and the words No Hate painted in one cheek. A majority of allies showed up today, which I found um, to be very interesting and amazing. The No Hate Campaign is important because I don't think anyone should be discriminated against. Everyone should have equal and fair opportunities and everything. The No Hate Campaign is just one of many ways the LGBT community hopes to connect and spread the awareness to their community and more. With their close-up, Melissa Nobles. If you're interested in becoming a member of Global or supporting one of their events, connect with them on Facebook. Winthrop students are lacing up their walking shoes, all for a good cause. Reporter Cameron Powell shows us how they are promoting social equality one step at a time. With recent tragedies like Trayvon Martin in Ferguson, Missouri still fresh in people's minds, the Stop and Think Walk was designed as a way for students to peacefully vent their frustrations and sorrow while still spreading the word. Um, what we're doing the Stop and Think Walk just to raise awareness about prevalent race issues that have been um, you know, happening throughout history in America and so we just wanted to bring 
more awareness as far as like you know dealing with the recent issues with Mike Brown and things like that so just trying to get people to understand that it is still an issue and that we need to work on it. Before the walk began attendees were asked to sign a pledge promoting social justice everywhere. Sociology and criminology professor Dr. Brad Tripp spoke a few inspirational words before the walk kicked off. Martin Luther King Jr. said that human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. He also addressed why having a peaceful protest is so key. When you're seeking justice and specifically social justice, you have to have the heart and the courage to be the stronger, the tougher, the better person. And if you let others incite or inspire you to violence, then your message isn't gonna get across. And the walk started at the top of Scholars and supporters wore a t-shirt that emphasized a stop and think message. The peaceful march ended in the lawn out front of Kynard. And after a brief moment of silence, students were given a chance to voice what the walk meant to them. Speaker Dr. Tripp closed the walk with a final message. Our power within our political system to go out and vote. One walker says she really needed something like this. It's really been important for me for us as youth to get together and vocalize our feelings and, you know, stand for what we believe in. And it was really refreshing to see um, my youth, my peers come together and vocalize peace and unity and equality. So this was really um, touching for me. So if social justice is something you support, then join the movement. Join the walk. Cameron Powell, Winthrop Close-Up. More than 100 students turned out to participate in the Stop and Think Walk. If you were among the crowd, share some of your thoughts with us on Twitter at Winthrop Close Up. Coming up on Winthrop Close Up, students gathered to discuss sex, sexually transmitted diseases, and other tough topics. And zombies are on the prowl. In Rock Hill, how can you be a part of the action? Plus, moms in Rock Hill are coming together to tackle a major issue, drunk driving. All of that's up next. Thanks for staying with us. You better watch out. Rock Hill is crawling with zombies. I took an in-depth look into The Walking Dead and how they're taking over. A mix of zombies and humans were running rampant around Old Town Rock Hill, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Sheila Caldwell is a heart attack survivor and the founder of Heart to Heart Foundation that hosts the Old Town Zombie Crawl. We started it last year. We wanted something in the fall to be a big awareness event to bring families out to really educate the community about heart disease, but more importantly, how we prevent it because heart disease begins in childhood. The crowd was open to anybody, offering a fun run for anyone who wants to participate and a 5K for the more serious runners. I run cross country and the season just ended on Wednesday. So while I expected not to have a race this Saturday, I saw this post and I was like, well, that looks cool. So I decided to do the 5K. I like to do a lot of 5Ks, so I wanted to do this one because I heard it was really fun. Another big attraction to the crawl is the zombie makeup. Runners waited in long lines to get their makeup done. Here at the Old Town Zombie Crawl, the makeup artists are so good that they can turn anybody into a killer zombie. The crawl also had giveaways from vendors, bounce houses for the kids, and a television star from The Walking Dead. Addie Miller played the first ever zombie on the hit TV show. She said that she had fun supporting Heart to Heart's cause. It was really fun getting to see like all the zombies and then also the humans that are running from the zombies and it's just a blast. The annual zombie call, call, crawl excuse me, calls for many volunteers to be involved in next year's crawl. Email us for more information. From zombies to another potentially scary situation, unprotected sex is a hot topic, especially on college, college campuses. Reporter Tabitha Crawley finds out why some students are choosing to not use protection. And obviously, if you're a freshman, um, not to be too vulgar, but you're probably going to go out and hook up a little bit more often than you would be as you get older, where you may have someone that you're in a stable relationship. According to this study, the amount of unprotected sex doubles from freshman year to senior year. Guys and girls going to um, maybe get like checkups or something and the health department just gives you a bag of condoms. That 
becomes more of like a joke within, I think, the, the youth culture for us. Um, females sometimes will say if the male doesn't bring it up, then they're not going to bring it up. A lot of people feel like it feels more natural. Events and fairs educate students about the risk of unprotected sex. You speak about your friends when it comes to sex, it's usually not on facts and statistics. It gives the students an opportunity to understand and realize what resources are available to them on campus, within the community, and how they can utilize that organization's or, uh, or business's service. However, condoms aren't a magical cure for preventing all forms of STDs. There's some STDs that um, only require skin-to-skin -skin contact, like herpes or genital warts. So condoms won't necessarily protect against those if you're exposed to those in an area that the condom doesn't cover. Because just the cost of a baby alone is in the millions. And the risk of having a sexually transmitted disease is why would anyone not use a condom? That's the real question. Tabitha Corley, Winthrop Close Up. Young adults ages 15 to 34 account for nearly half of all new STI inf infections in the United States. Always stay top of your sexual health and visit clinics like Catawba Care for routine checkups. Talking about sex isn't always easy, but it's an important conversation. Reporter Rachel Richardson explains how a group of actors are teaching students about safe sex. I think that it was uh, about a subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about, um, and it brought up some very important, um, I guess, topics when dealing with sex. Speak About It is a campaign that travels to universities to talk about sex. The actors share stories and tips in a relatable way. Hey, you guys, uh, how's the night going? How's the party? Hey, great. Uh, I think we're just going to head out. I could uh, relate to maybe some of the social, the more uh, partying scenes, things like that. And um, I guess being in an environment where a lot of people are drinking and some people can't make decisions on their own. So. speak about it. Monologues of college students' sex stories were performed. These skits encourage students to have open conversations about healthy sex habits. The message is sort of universal, but where people are coming from is very different, and so it's, it's important to talk about it as much as possible. Winthrop faculty encourage student organizations to attend this event. I'm hoping that after this program tonight, the students are going to go back to their groups and actually have conversations and talk about this further and um, continue to have these conversations to so not just have like this one weekend and talk about it and then be done. It needs to be a constant and continuous conversation and education to have people build that self-confidence to feel empowered to intervene and, don't be, and to not be a bystander. For more information about healthy habits or to share your own stories, visit www.speakaboutitonline.com. Rachel Richardson, Winthrop Close-Up. Okay. Speak About It travels across the nation encouraging people to live a healthy and productive lifestyle. Being productive and proactive inevitably leads college students to the collegiate grand prize, graduation. Reporter Damon Mack informs us on graduation preparation. After the long four plus years of stress and sleepless nights, there is actually a moment where satisfaction meets anticipation. But this moment is only experienced after the proper steps are taken. So the application is, is the first step. Um, after that, students should just be keeping aware of their progress, um, constantly looking at degree works to make sure they're fulfilling requirements, go into cultural events, um, and then once we uh, do the degree audit, we'll send the student the uh, information they need to plan their final semester. Fulfilling these necessary steps are easier said than done. The hardest part of the last semester of graduating is being able to stay focused. You have the prize in front of you, but you still have to keep going, you still have to keep working. College days and nights can have you at your highest of highs. 
and at your lowest of lows. But the feeling in the end is inexpressible. I would say that it feels like an accomplishment basically to um, to go on, have gone through college and stuff, you know, and kept your goals and stuff in place, your standards and stuff like that, and be able to uh, accomplish something great. The main thing that pops out to me are two words, happy, ex well, excited, and scared. Um, definitely excited because I had just completed a huge accomplishment. Damon Mack went through close-up. If you are a graduating senior, email us at graduation, email us a graduation picture for a chance of being featured on the show at the end of the semester. Coming up on Winthrop Close Up, we'll join Brandon Gray and the CNN News Center, bringing you national and local news, including a potential shooter stop in her tracks. Welcome to the CNN News Center. I'm Brandon Gray, and these are your top stories. Pennsylvania police say a 17-year-old girl planned a mass shooting at her school. Radford High School administrators found a notebook belonging to the girl on Monday. Authorities say the student wrote about her plans to become the first female school shooter. She has been charged as a juvenile for making terrorist threats. The incident has shook fellow students at Radnor. Well, unsettling. Uh, to be honest, you, you hope that no one would be capable of doing this, especially when you know someone like this. Police say the girl is being examined by a psychiatrist. Authorities don't believe the girl had any access to weapons. Risk a matter behavior puts many lives at risk. In 2012, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reported that 10,000 people died in drunk driving crashes. That's one every 51 minutes. A team of moms are uniting to spread the message of the dangers of drunk driving. People got to realize, you know, one, one drink can still make you, your judgment just a little bit off. It doesn't matter if you're, it's still ab uh, below the law, you're still, you're still putting your life and others at risk. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, also known as MAD, fights to eliminate drunk driving on highways. MAD's message is very simple. Drunk driving can and should be prevented. Every single time there's a drunk driving crash or a crash that involves drugs too, which are impairing, is that it was 100% 100, 100 preventable. If you've had a few drinks, think before getting into your car, putting your key in the ignition, and ask yourself, is it really worth jeopardizing the lives of others and sacrificing your own future? Several different vendors were on site for the walk. Many of those who participated were personally affected by the carelessness of a drunk driver. It was shock and disbelief and you're like, we were like in a fog for so long just trying to make sense of it. And it was five days before he was to come home for Christmas and we hadn't seen him since May of that year. Along with raising awareness, MAD would also like to raise money for programming. Its real purpose is to create awareness of the dangers of drunk driving, but also to raise some critical funds for MAD to implement programming, not only here in Mecklenburg County, but across the state. So far, Mothers Against Drug Driving has raised over $22,000. Log on to support.mad.com to donate to the cause. In state news, midterm elections are over and Senator Lindsey Graham beat out candidate Brad Hutto. 55% to 38%. Governor Nikki Haley was re-elected over candidate Vincent Shaheen with more than a 15% margin. According to CNN, the Republican Party regained control of the Senate by taking over seven seats. A big deal to many Democratic leaders. That wraps up this week in the CNN News Center. Now back to Leslie and Gabrielle in the studio. Thanks, Brandon. Coming up on Winthrop Close Up, we'll join Melissa Nobles for the latest in campus arts and entertainment. And talent is no stranger to a number of Winthrop students. We're bringing you a talent highlight up next. Thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa Nobles with the latest in arts and entertainment. Music unites people from all backgrounds and jazz bridges generations. The Rock Hill community visits Winthrop University for the beat of the band. You're hearing sounds of the Winthrop Jazz Ensemble, 
which was organized by the Department of Music to showcase student musical talents. Um, at the School of Music, we, we uh, try to give students a very broad um, education so when they leave here they're prepared to play in any style, any medium, um, or, or teach in, in the same uh, aspect. We will teach those as well. So. In addition to serving as a showcase, the concert allows students to receive invaluable performance experience. Members of the Jazz Ensemble are a part of a large group of talented students at Winthrop University. Reporter Jerion Manning spotlights one student who is sharing her talents with others. From a young age, Nia Anthony has had an interest and love for music. And I remember like every year our family would go on vacation and like we went to Destin Beach and destinations that are about like eight hours away so we'd always play some kind of music. And I remember like she used to always play the Whitney Houston album and I used to sing along and I was like, yeah, and she's like, yes, Nia, yeah. So that's when I got started with singing. Nia grew in her talent and is now a music major here at Winthrop University, but she doesn't sing alone. Me and Nia first met um, and Margaret Nance and uh, she started playing music and um, I just kind of joined in, hopped in and uh, we just had jam sessions after that. I feel like Nia's amazing. She's really going to go somewhere in life. Um, her with her, her guitar skills and her, um, her bass skills and um, her vocal skills. So um, I predict a, a very bright future for her. Anthony has performed at school open mic nights and talent shows. She even opened and played for a nationally renowned slam poet. She plans on continuing music in her future. And I would love to perform with music. So I really, like I said earlier, I want to be able to send a positive message out to people because you have a lot of people on the radio nowadays that have like a nice beat, you know, and it's, it's a nice song to get hyped to and you're like, hey, let me dance to this or whatever. But like, if you listen to what the artist is really saying, it's nothing that's really going to help society. So keep an eye and an ear out for Miss Anthony. Her talent promises her a bright future. Jerry Ann Manning, with their close up. If you have a talent that you would like highlighted on the show, email us today. This weekend's box office results are in. Universal Studios' Ouija, based on the Parker Brothers board game, held on to the number one spot for a second week in a row with over 10.7 million in ticket sales with newcomer Nightcrawler starring Jake Gyllenhaal taking the number two spot and Brad Pitt's Fury at number three. This brings arts and entertainment to an end. Let's take it back to Leslie and Gabrielle in the studio. Thanks, Melissa. Many people are still excited about Halloween, one of the most popular holidays in the western part of the world. And everyone celebrates it in a different way. The Vision of Praise Gospel Choir brings Holy Ween a faith-based celebration to campus event to campus. Event goers participated in face painting, carnival games, and lots of candy eating. To, uh, it's a substitute for Halloween, so those who are religious um, have some type of substitute to come out, still have fun, eat candy, and enjoy the holiday without partaking in Halloween activities. According to a recent national poll, one in four adults dressed up for Halloween. That's it for this week's Winthrop Close Up. As always, connect with us on your favorite social media sites. We'll see you next week for another Winthrop Close Up.